Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I am Kisma, and I'm so excited for today's episode because we are going to be talking about your story. What's your story? Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Well, hello there, Nick. Hello there, Kisma. What's going on? Well, I'm really excited to be doing an episode uh, with just the two of us. I know. We've had some cool guests on. We've had some really cool guests, but we haven't had time for us to just really sit down. Let me just say we had Michael Neely. Go back, listen to that one. 10,000 Buddhas, Amanda Giacomini. Of course, we've had Trevor Hall and... Larry Broughton, like all kinds of cool people. And we've got some cool people coming up. Really, really cool. But it is fun. We're here in our office in Carlsbad, just jamming away. Yeah, a little bit of a late night session. Well, yeah. not late night session. Yeah, it's 7.30. Both of us just pounded a bag of chips that were amazing. <laughs> Wait, they were quinoa chips, though. Were, were they, they quinoa? Is that oh, what they were? On. They were like, Hannes, pull, it, pull the bag out of the trash. What is it? <laughs> they are empty, guys. <laughs> Hummus crisps, rosemary and olive oil. Oh, my God. Made with amazing. rice and real chickpeas off the eaten path off the eaten path there's our non-sponsor sponsor for today's episode <laughs> oh my gosh we just tore through those i know because so i've been here since i don't know 8 30 a.m had yeah, a full really. day of clients and i was like could you bring chips <laughs> <laughs> but this is cool yeah it is nice to talk and you had the idea for today's episode which is what's your story i did it's something i've been thinking about a lot i was in boise of Boise, Idaho, of hanging out with the Russell Brunson and the ClickFunnels people. Yeah, I'm a Lucky huge fan. You. Of, I'm a huge fan of ClickFunnels. Yeah, and I super dig the technology and what they've done with it. Like they've simplified making web pages and funnels for people like me, and I just I love it. I think Good. it's the coolest thing. What we were really doing though, it's funny that that's just the thing that everybody uses there. Mm-hmm. But what we're really doing is just talking about. You know, like, how do you get your message out? Like, how do you yeah. impact more people? How do you, you know, like all these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And there's so amazing people there, people with really, really cool businesses. Yeah. There was a lady there who works with people through medic, you know, with Medicaid, you know, and kind of getting out of that whole system. Mm-hmm. There was, I learned from a lady there that, uh, and I didn't know this, that doctors are the, high, they have a high, the highest suicide rate of any profession. Mm. That's I had no disturbing. idea. It makes sense. Like when she broke it down for me, it made perfect sense, but I had oh. no idea. So she works with doctors? She works with doctors to help, number one, get them out of the system. And number two is get their heads straight because mm-hmm. they're kind of a mess, you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's mm-hmm. not their fault necessarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- they're just kind of stuck in a bad system right. and, and everything like that. Anyway, so there's people there with really cool businesses. Right. And one of the things that we talked about was stories. And they talked about it more in the context of how do you communicate your message and connect right. with people. And I thought right. that's really cool because I think that's important and I, I want to learn about that. Of course, where my mind took it was to the stories and, and how that really works in our life. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. How, how do stories function in our life? Oh, it's amazing. And when I stop just for a second to mm-hmm. really start to think about where stories show up, it's just everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere, every, every, every single day. Everywhere, every single day. Yeah. You know, you think about, we're big fans of some TV shows. Just a few. Just a few. Billions. Billions. Versailles. Yeah. We, we nickname you Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Versailles is one that we're, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, remember The Crown? The Crown was oh, awesome. So good. So good. Yeah, we're really picky about the shows, but when we watch one, we really watch one. Yeah, we get into it. Yeah. And uh, you're a big fan of the period ones. And I am. I love the costumes. <laughs> it's so cool. I want to walk around with an English accent and the big... <laughs> Remember yeah. our pole dark when we started to get on the, the Okay, pole dark can we thing? move on to the story? Oh, but I guess they are stories. They are stories. They are stories. <laughs> there are stories. Like we get and we get wrapped and it's highlighting 
Like, think about this. Oh, wait, wait. But I just got to interrupt. Nick would, like, start talking to me in Old English when we were watching Poldark. I would text her in Old English. Yeah. You know, the hound. The, the hound. The hound uh, referring tended. to Lenny the Boston Terrier. The hound has been tended. <laughs> it's like, we've gone over the deep end. No, but th- what we just did, mm-hmm. just just spontaneously, it, it really, in my mind, demonstrated the power of story. Yeah. Because how quickly we get sucked into stories. Yeah, and right. it's just like, it's so cool. And TV shows are so amazing. They have a, such a vivid way of telling stories. Mm-hmm. And when I started to look at like all the places that stories show up in our life, it is staggering. Mm-hmm. This is how we communicate. It's through story. And you see it, a big one. Uh, this is how we learn. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Totally. That's Aesop's how we, fables. That's how we've been taught um, religion. That's how we've been right. taught morality. That's how we've been taught so many different things about our lives. You know, you can probably think back to um, if you were fortunate enough to have grandparents that you were close with, you know, you think about the stories that your grandparents told you. Right. Uh, the stories that, you know, aunts and uncles, aunts and uncles, and you hang out at the family thing and they tell the same story yeah. again and again. But if it's a good storyteller, uh, like my, you know, one of my uncles is, it's always fun to listen to. It's always fun. I remember my dad towards the end of his life, we would get him talking and it would just be like old times coming out. It was unbelievable. The things he, I was like, what? what? <laughs> is like, this real? Really? <laughs> Gangsters in the family? Oh, golly. Okay. Yeah, I love your, fa- your I family know. stories. I <laughs> just trump mine yeah. times a hundred. Yeah. They're so cool. <laughs> And I remember that too, uh, in my grandma's later years, I, I would sit down with her and talk with her about things and she would share some things that I just never heard before. Right. And it's like, oh man. Yeah. And, and I think in their age, like they had developed that skill for sharing stories mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. a different way than we have. Way different. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. And maybe that, you know, when I look at stories, I think, Hmm. Like the positive is you learn and through this emotional association, you know, when you're learning, when you're hearing a story from a family member, even something about morality, like there's something that, you know, speaks to the heart usually, or it can also create fear in the mind, right? Which is a little dangerous, I think. And, but now it's like, who's telling a story because so many people are really into their own electronic device. Of course, there's stories all over Instagram and Facebook and people are tweeting and mm-hmm. texting stories, but it's not the same. It's not the same as is really telling a story. Right. It is how we are indoctrinated into belief structures. Mm-hmm. That is what that is what stories do. Mm-hmm. You, know, you think about the uh, Jungian ar- archetypes. You know, right. Those are there are stories that have been told time and again in different ways that indoctrinate into this particular persona, right? And that archetype shows up. You know, I know a lot of people that listen to our show; they have that mystic quality about them. Yeah, when right. We think about we want to like think about higher thought. We want to think about what's beyond this, the metaphysical. We love magic. Right, exactly. And and it's not like we want somebody to just give us the magic. It's we want to discover the magic. We really want the magic. You know, you want the magic. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, I can only, like, that's, I don't even know where that came from in me. I just know that that was something that was always there for, as far as I'm concerned. Right, right. You know, the first time I saw uh, Star Wars, like I was super young when oh. Star Wars came out and, and that, that was it. I saw yeah. a lightsaber. I was like, I want that. I saw them move things with their mind. I was like, I want that. He's still trying people. It hasn't quite, it's I'm happening. Still, I'm working at it. I yeah. got some tips. I saw you move that plate across the table the other day. You thought I wasn't looking. <laughs> Like a little flying saucer hovering. I'll never tell. Um, mm-hmm. But you anyway, got- it, I, that's my the life goals, right? right? Like I want to move things with my mind. And I'm not afraid to say it. And I wouldn't mind having a lightsaber, but not necessary. Anyway, so we talk about like how this indoctrinates us into a belief structure. You know, mm-hmm. it just, it permeates and, mm-hmm. and, it, and, it, and it reveals in all of us in different degrees. You know, it could be the mystic, it could be the sage, it could be like the regular guy, you right. know, the, the regular gal. There's all these young and ar- archetypes are really powerful and they're developed through story. Right. All the Bible stories, those were passed down by word of mouth. And what I, you know, I found something that's really interesting about that. 
when they were passed down through word of mouth, Mm -hmm. the accuracy is, is shocking over generations. Cause you think like, okay, well today if we play a game of telephone, it gets around 30 people and it's a totally Uh, 10 people. It's a different story that donkeys turned into a cow and the, the, yeah. Yeah. But no, but think about it. Okay. So you're back in the day. They tell the same story again, again, and, and they, they master the, the story and they, and they master the story yeah. and they tell that story It could be, and they understand that each and every piece of that story right. has a purpose and right. a meaning. And so that they take great care in how that story is told. And so over time, those stories can be translated with shocking accuracy. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's really true. So one of the things that I I tended to think, because I'm a skeptic, you know, mm-hmm. I have a skeptical mind and um, and I would look at the Bible stories and I would think like, oh, well, what do you expect? You know, like they weren't even written down until hundreds of years later, you know, who's to know? Mm-hmm. And when I really stopped to think about that and really looked into how stories get passed along and how they would have got passed along at that time, whole different game. Yeah. Right? Totally. And it's really about looking for those truths. But that's kind of off the topic. What we're really talking about is, but but not in a certain way, is how those stories indoctrinate us into belief right. structures and understandings. Yeah. And what I think about, I think about three main stories that we are being told. Um, not in particular, but from three main sources, I mm-hmm. think is a better way mm-hmm. to put it. So the first one is a story that culture tells us. Culture. Does that include religion? I would include religion in religion. that. I would mm-hmm. also look at, like, say, in the U.S., our culture yeah. of uh, what are what is our media telling us? Mm. What is our government telling us? So it can be current or ancient. It could be, It yeah. could be about the Boston Tea Party, or it could be about what's happening at the White House. Well, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and more more than that, it's almost like, you know, like you see face, people on Facebook, they're like, hive mind, you know, it's, they've got yeah. that hive mind. Well, this is that hive mind. Yeah. You know, it's that collective consciousness um, and how this narrative is unfolding for us. So it's stories about gender. It's stories about, um, you know, race. It's stories about politics beliefs it, beliefs mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. lack you know guns yeah, no guns guns and no guns yeah mm-hmm. violence war all of these things like these are all stories that we're being told about culture mm-hmm. you know sure you can look at some major turning points i think the vietnam war was a major turning point yeah. in, in our culture because right. up until then number one we hadn't really lost a war yeah kind of i mean korea is questionable um kind of a stalemate but at the end of the day it was like the wars had a just cause. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all of this stuff came out about Vietnam and it was like, wait a second, right? what's going on here? And it really twisted a lot of things. And so that narrative took a major turning point. Right, right. And look at where we are now. Right. And that's just one of them. Think about sex, another one, like gender identity. Yeah. And how... Like everything that we're told about who and what you are supposed to be. Right. I'm a man, you're a woman. And there's certain things about the way that we're supposed to be. And the fact of the matter is, I'm a man and you're a woman. But what does that really mean? So these stories really bend our minds as far as like, well, what does all this stuff mean to us? Right. I should wear lipstick and do this and do this and do this or not. Yeah. If you get, if I get gray hair, then I look, uh, you know, kind of dashing. Handsome. He looks more handsome. If I get gray hair, I'm like going to Rochelle to do my hair. That's a different story. Sucks. Yeah. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I'm not saying any of it to make it right or wrong. Maybe I'll go all gray. I think you'd look badass gray. I, I really do, actually. Wendy goes gray. Anyways. <laughs> Wouldn't change anything about the way I feel about you, but, um, or maybe it would, and I don't even know it yet. That's a story, right? That could be a story. <laughs> Who knows? But here's my question. I mean, the, these stories, you know, especially like the culture, the family, the religion, when does one ever get clear or does one ever get clear to just perceive the world, what's in front of them? from such a crystal clear lens without this identification to a story. Well, that's the, that's the real trick of tricks because we are, I can't remember who said it or coined the phrase, but we are as human beings, meaning making machines. Wow. Trying to make a meaning of everything. We'll make a meaning of everything. That is what we do. Instead of just going, hmm, like staying objective. Staying objective is the the opposite of that. And that's, 
that's the dichotomy of being a human being is we have that aspect of that of right. us of our innate being our, our essence that is truly right. purely objective to the experience and then we have that other part of us the personality that's totally involved in it right right and and that's the dichotomy of being a human being yeah. and that part that's really involved makes a story yeah so there's always going to be a story around yeah it. there's always going to be a meaning right stories have meaning right and that's just one layer. Now look at the other layer, like you draw it in a layer closer and mm -hmm. look now at like your immediate family, your friends, your mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. uh, and those, those immediate folks around you and what they'll, the stories that they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Right. About, so let's, okay, let's, they'll tell you their own story about the way that the world is, mm -hmm. but they'll also tell you a story about who they think you are. Of course. And then that becomes identification again for the child yeah, and or that, the young adult. And that can be really confusing. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you've got a family, like my folks, I, I don't think my folks necessarily really understood me. Like I'll use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. I, I think they, they knew enough to kind of like leave me alone. <laughs> um, to No, I, and I mean that like genuinely, mm -hmm. like they didn't really interfere. Like they knew that I was a little different in mm -hmm. certain ways. And I don't think they fully got that. And that's cool mm -hmm. because they didn't try to make me like them. That's good. So Smart on them. Right. So mm -hmm. that left some of that story off and let me free to follow mm -hmm. my bizarre mm -hmm. path in mm -hmm. life. Well, not everybody's so fortunate. Yeah. Like some people, you know, their family has told them one thing about themselves. Culture has told them something entirely different. Mm-hmm. And then they're out there in the world with this radically different perspectives that are, that's what we call cognitive dissonance, Yeah, you know, yeah. and they wind up saying things that are just so obviously either inaccurate or hypocritical Yeah, and not, not even meaning to do it. And then what I find interesting, or at least as I was, you know, coming into adulthood is as we leave one story and step into another, it can be very confusing. Oh my God. Like, you know, I grew up in Steubenville, <laughs> Ohio, Winchesville, Ohio. Like my best friends were, had last names with vitches like mine, or they were Greek or they were Italian. Like everyone had a very colorful name. Mm. And then I went to Boston Conservatory for two years and I was like, what's happening? Like, where, where's all my friends that have this European descent? They weren't around. And it was really weird. It's like someone transported me into a completely different story. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, because the mm -hmm. arts are so, um, mm -hmm. they have so, they're so diverse. Yeah. But I, then I was not around the people. I, it was more diverse in Ohio where I grew up than it was like in Boston where I went to school. Mm. It was just weird. Fascinating. I know. Yeah. It was just strange. So I felt very like weird. So that story was different. Yeah. And so we, we got pulled out and put into different stories all the time. And our brains are trying to adapt to that right. and make new meaning mm -hmm. and figure out where do we fit in? Like, yeah. How do I fit in? You know, right. Because you're, you're the hero of your story. And yeah. I believe that actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that everybody should be the hero of their story. Mm. You know, play, play that role. Like you, you, the way that one person plays and bees the hero is going to be really different than totally. the way another one does. But at the end of the day, it's like be your own hero, right, like right. absolutely be the hero of your story. Right. And then you're adapting it to all these different right. circumstances. It's fascinating. Like this is why I believe that human beings are just the most fascinating creatures. Right. And that's just, okay. So now we've got these two different layers, you know, what a culture's telling us and what's all out there, you know, the, they that are yeah. telling us. And then we've got, okay, well then the immediate, you know, family and friends and loved ones and, mm -hmm. and all the people, you know, who are more intimate to us. Okay. Well, likely that's going to carry a little bit more weight, although the volume is typically a little bit lower. Right. And it's often done out of protection or fear or whatever. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. now you've got, mm -hmm. so let's just take parents, for example. Well, your parents are going to take, they're going to want to protect you. Of course, they want to prevent you from making all the mistakes that they did. And mm -hmm. they're going to try and not screw it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and so they're going to project all that onto right. you. You know, they don't, it's not like they mean yeah. to do it. It's just yeah. what happens. Right. And then that all gets, you know, that third layer is the story that we tell ourselves. So we adopt those stories and then right. we tell ourselves a story. Right. And that's where it becomes super insidious because who do you believe? I know. And the stories that our own mind can tell us, I think can be the most uplifting or the most devastating 
depending on which way we're facing in our life. Exactly. Like we is the way I look at this story from the self is that there's, you know, I, I talk about this all the time with my students and clients. There's two minds. There's a conscious and subconscious mind. Whose story are you listening to or who's writing the story? Yeah. If your conscious mind is not consistently and carefully writing and designing your story, that subconscious mind is going to pull from past events, from other events and just go haywire. Mm. And then the story is like either past events or worry, fear, whatever. It's the conscious mind that has to come in and direct one's own story. Yes. The conscious mind is the one. No, but what's interesting... I, I, oh Except it often be driven by the subconscious if it's not cleared it, or solved or resolved. It, exactly. Because it's going from a past story. And, and that's the vast majority of, of course. mental processes is happening subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Who was... I think it was... Oh, man, Ted McGrath. I just watched one of his videos today. And, um, you know, he was talking about, he was, I I just remember from a long time ago when we used to hang out with him, he would talk about this conscious and subconscious Mm -hmm. and he would use that example of, okay, well, you've got like the motorboat and then you've got the skier, like the Mm -hmm. water skier and Mm -hmm. and the motorboat is doing like all the work there. That's the subconscious actually. And Mm -hmm. the skier is like behind there. It's kind of following what the subconscious is dictating. Mm -hmm. Now, as I've unfolded this through, and, and you as well, through the energy mastery tools, the Paramita system in particular, where the the goal of that system is to get your conscious and your subconscious mind actually having the same conversation. Right. So when you look at story and how deeply that gets embedded, it gets embedded deeply into the subconscious mind. And now those stories are playing out again and again and again. Right. And your conscious mind, which is a much smaller percentage of the actual mind and what's guiding our lives is kind of like just sort of along for the ride. Mm. And think about how many times We see patterns play out in our lives. Mm -hmm. Say like, you're just getting to that point of breakthrough. Right. This is it. I'm Mm -hmm. really going to change. Everything's going to change. I know it can happen. And then everything spins out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. again and again and again. Well, that's a subconscious pattern that's running. Of course. No question about it. Of course. And when you know how to get into that and start to unwind mm-hmm. those things and actually resolve it, well, your conscious and your subconscious can actually have mm-hmm. the same conversation mm-hmm. of like, yeah, we're going that direction rather mm-hmm. than, no, we're going over here. No, we're going over there. And then everybody's mm-hmm. going in a different direction. And then you're stuck in the middle with all this chatter in your head. Right. So that's tricky. But there's stories. There's stories that have been told again and again and again and embedded. And then once you latch onto that story, right. so if you have a certain belief about yourself and you latch onto that story... That's yours now. That's who you are. It's yours. And it's what I was sharing with a client today. Like I get your analogy of the conscious mind being the skier, but I often look at it as the conscious mind has a responsibility to be the pilot and to direct the subconscious mind. It has the opportunity. It has the opportunity. So when someone says, you know, this is a great one, I can't afford that. Never say that because then you're embedding the in your words are embedding in the subconscious that you can't. And that energy, that frequency goes out and aligns more things that you can't. Yes. So you're better off just saying, I choose not to buy it. Yeah. Make like, I choose not to buy it. It can be a numbers reason. It can be, it's too frivolous or you just whatever, but avoid saying I can't afford it. Yeah. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree mm-hmm. with that. Uh, that's the real trick, though, is that is how do you know, mm-hmm. right? So you go to say like, oh, well, I choose not to do that, even though you know that that's exactly where you need to be, even though you know this is actually mm-hmm. aligned with where mm-hmm. you want to go, mm-hmm. even though you know that you could that you could make it work some way financially, or right. I choose not to. Why? Yeah, well, that's that's a whole different podcast exactly. i think yeah. i think it is mm-hmm. no but but it, but it speaks directly to the point and i I, right. just, I think it's so cool that you brought that up is like oh there's so many different layers there's so many different layers of the story and what are we listening to that layers and layers and begins to be like our life movie yeah that's it is that is your movie so we have been working With a tool, I know I've been using it with my clients called the Ultimate Life Tool. We've mentioned it a few times. And what is fascinating about this is it actually, through the physicality, through the look of a person, will tell you what 
what story you can create by defining your true features, talents, and skills. Mm -hmm. And this has been really amazing, I think, for both of us to utilize for ourselves and to um, use for clients. But it's like, actually, here's your story. Yeah. This is what you're made of. Here's your story. Here's the, you know, the radiance of the story. Here's the energy of the story. And it's really amazing. So I, I know we'll circle back to this because we have a special offer for people that want to um, experience this. But do you want to talk a little bit more about yeah. how this shows up? I would say, okay, so there's two layers to this. Number one is you, we hear a lot of times, and, and I know we've said is like, stay in your own lane. Just mm-hmm. stay in your own lane. Well, the energy tools are great for helping you stay in your own lane. Nothing better. Right. You know, energy mastery is the most amazing thing to help you stay in your own lane. Okay. What's your own lane? Which lane is that? Which lane is it? Who's driving? Yeah. And and who's driving the car? Right. So when we look at this, and I think about this in more, you said it like, what's your story? I think about like, like. Who's the superhero? What kind of superhero right, are you? Right, right. It's not a question of whether or not you're a superhero. You you're are. a freaking superhero. Yes, correct. Uh, it's what kind of superhero yeah, are you? Yeah, right, exactly. And, What's the feature? What's the skill? Like, are you about initiating change? Are you about um, creating order? Are you about beauty? Are you about compassion? Um, do you, you need to travel? You know, like there's, yeah. there's 12 distinctive features that will define your superpower. Right. And, and lots of times these stories, they indoctrinate us into a belief that we need to be a certain way mm-hmm. in order to be successful in the world. And, then what happens is that we, after we adopt that, and if it's not true to your style, mm-hmm. then you're going to be inauthentic and that's going to cause any energy. Right. Pain. Like exactly. that's all there is to it. It's going to, it's going to feel inauthentic to you. You're going to have to work really hard at it and it's mm-hmm. going to drain your energy every time right. you do it. Right. Exactly. So if that's how you're showing up, that's a really good indicator. If you're experiencing a lot of en- energy drain, that's a really good indicator that right. you're not, it's, it's not about, being fake. It's not like you're being fake. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm saying at all. Mm-hmm. It's saying inauthentic to who you, you know, to that who you are. And the, and the beautiful thing is when you are aligned with the authenticity, you don't need to do things that are inauthentic because there's more energy, there's more focus, there's more truth. The story is real. It massively simplifies yeah. your life because right. you know, I, I do this and this. I have a pilot and I have a co-pilot. And when I honor my pilot and my co-pilot, I'm good to go. And all those other exactly. things I can figure out. Right. Because you think about great leaders, there's no magic formula to great leaders. Right. Exactly. There are leaders that led front and center and were, who were all out there full on driving the mission. Mm-hmm. And there were other leaders who led from behind the scenes. Right. There were people who were really blunt Mm -hmm. and really direct. And there were others who were very subtle Mm -hmm. and very relaxed. Mm -hmm. There's no magic formula. And as many different people are as many different iterations. Exactly. So there'll be a link in the show notes, guys. Um, the, The special offer, just to put it out there, is a call with Nick. It'll send you the link to take the tool and it'll get on the phone with you and tell you about you. And it's pretty special to have a private call with Nick. So mm-hmm. check the show notes and you'll see the special offer there. Um, but let's kind of circle back and and how do we, not how, it's a bad word, but what needs to happen for our listeners to get clear on what are the stories they should be listening to for their highest and best and which ones they can let go of? Uh, you know, I'm so glad, I'm, I'm so glad you brought this up because I think this is, this is the most important thing. Like you're always enrolling into something. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. uh, what was it? Daniel Pink's book called to sell is human. Right. And, right. And he talks about sales in everyday life and, right. and, and, and it's everywhere, right? So we've got stories and you're either buying into stories that are helping you or you're buying right. into stories that are not. You're enrolling into stories that are helping you. You're enrolling in, into stories that stories mm-hmm. that are limiting you. Mm-hmm. So the really big question is, I think is like, is that so? Right. Is it true? Is that true? The Chinese sage. Some people know this from Byron Katie's work and actually comes from her as well, but a Chinese sage started this 
Is it so? Centuries ago, yeah. is that so? She popularized that, and I think that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, it's amazing work. Uh, but that's a, it's a really valid question to answer because, I, I mean, look, I even catch myself in things where, mm-hmm. uh, oh, I'm not good at this. Mm-hmm. You know, is that so? Is that so? You've been rocking it. Yeah, it's so, so true. Is it really true? You know, um, it doesn't mean that I should be doing that in the business or right. or anything like that. It just right. means that, well, I'm, you know, is that is that true? Right. Because these limiting, the, what they ultimately wind up being, what the, all these stories wind up being are limiting beliefs and binds that keep us stuck in a Not certain fun. way of being, yeah. doing, and having. And, and when we're in a limiting belief or we're bound up in a story that is not in alignment or is not authentic, we miss the miracles. Yeah. We miss the miracles of what we're wanting to manifest. Exactly. And, and I can guarantee that so much of your potential is hidden right now. Yeah. That there's sure. so much more to be had. I guarantee it. I guarantee yeah, it. For sure. For sure. And I think that's really powerful. Right. So I think one of the big questions then you ask, is that so? Is that and so? And ask that freaking question all day long. Oh, man. I just, I, they, <laughs> I, I, I didn't tell you about this, but um, it was, Uh-oh. it was, no, it was just recently. And I was, uh, <sighs> I was working on a project mm-hmm. and I was like, there was a story in my head that I caught myself in that was like, <laughs> You don't know what you're doing. Mm. What do you know about this? You know, I'm working on a uh, refining um, uh, an online training for mm-hmm. people about about energy mastery, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, I've had some ups and downs with it. You know, some of them have been really awesome, some of them have not been so great. And I was going through it for the hundredth time, and that story in my head started creeping. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, it's a bad story. You're no good at this. Eesh. And I, I caught myself down. I was like, whoa, I was really, I was almost kind of surprised like yeah. when I actually heard it. Cause I yeah. think a lot of times, you know, especially with the subconscious, right. well, it just kind of hangs out there right. and it's, it's in the back of your head. Like Whisper. you can kind of feel it's it. It's like our cat Sabrina batting at you. Yeah. Batting. She's a subtle batter except that, when she's not. Yeah. She's <laughs> she hits you up side head. <laughs> oh man. But it, it, so what did you do? It was, well, that was, I stopped dead in my tracks. I was like, is that true? is that really true? And I started to ask myself and I thought, no, you know, like I may not be the best at creating webinars or online trainings. You're pretty darn good. No, but truth be told, there's a lot better out there and a lot of people who know a lot more about it than I do. Mm. Fair statement. Mm -hmm. However, I know energy healing like nobody's business. That's true. And I know how to put together and I know how to talk about it. Right. And so, you know, why couldn't I do that? Right. And I had to, you know, I use some of the tools. I definitely pulled out, you know, the magic Mm -hmm, box and mm -hmm. some of the other tools and started doing my thing. But, you know, to clean that up, because I want that out. I don't want that lingering in my head. So get that out there and then, you know, go on and and continue the process, right? Right. Continue the process of refining, but it's getting out of that limitation. Right. That's so Stepping out. I mean, I think that's, you know, as we bring this full loop, it's like, because we could go on and on. You guys get how many stories are fluctuating and permeating and flowing and, and we need to ask, is it so? Is that so? Yeah. I just I think that's the most simple place to ask. It really and, is. And when you've got a lot going on in your head, yeah. Uh, best to keep it simple. Keep it <laughs> simple, man. Simple means clear and clear. Clarity is value. So I know that I mean, I would love to hear from you guys, info at sourcemovement.com. What are some of the stories that you know, you've been holding on to, or that you realize after listening to this is like, wait a minute, that's just not true. It is not a true story. This story needs to go. I would love to hear that. And I'd love to hear how people use the, is that so to negate or just to check a story? Cause you might be running the story like you're awesome. And you ask, is that so? And you're like, yeah, it is great. Rock and roll. Well, that's a great story to enroll yourself. That's a great story. It's really great to enroll yourself in the story of I can I can. This is very important because again, back to the conscious subconscious mind, sometimes that conscious mind needs to tell the subconscious again and again, I can do this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Yeah. It is better and stronger and more um, sustainable when the beliefs and the energy are cleared. So get with Nick on the special call. Um, Take advantage of that offer because when you can pull things out and get clear on who you are, it's so much easier um, until then, it's like, I got this, I got this, I got this. Yeah, yeah. Be I, the captain of your ship. Take control. 
yeah, you have to become a master at enrolling yourself. Yes. And uh, the, the, the funny thing about that is that you actually already are a master. It's just, what are you enrolling? Yeah, because you've been enrolling yourself into a story for right. years and years and years. Right. And now it's like, okay, well, what story are you going to enroll yourself exactly. into? So use that mastery in a new direction. And that's a segue. Like whatever story you're enrolling yourself in leads to what are you going to manifest? Exactly. Because if you're wanting to manifest and you're telling yourself a negative story, not going to be so easy. Not so easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the tool is really, I'm so excited uh, I really hope that people will take me up on mm-hmm. this. Like, it, it's such a cool thing. Essentially, what it's, it's going to tell you some main things. Number one, like Kisma talked about, it's going to talk. It's going to tell you about your drive. Like, who's driving the car? Right. Who, or, or but more to the point, who ought to be driving the car? Who's supposed <laughs> only one driver? People, only one driver. <laughs> only one pilot. Only one co-pilot. Yeah. Who ought that to be? Uh, and it may not be who you think. Okay. Uh, secondly is your energy centers. Right. So this is how you connect and relate and communicate with the world. And commit, download information. Exactly. Yeah. So it's huge. It's yeah. a really, really, really big piece to know because that's- And you'll be surprised. You might not think it is what it is. Yeah. 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 I was not surprised by yours. Yeah, I know. Intellectually centered. Yes. True. What was yours? Uh, instinctual. Pretty evenly balanced. Yeah, but oh, look instinctual. At you. Instinctually He's all balanced. balanced. Look at that story. <laughs> It is true. The numbers show. He's all balanced. I'm hypertrophied in my intellectual. You're, yeah. I need my alone time. You need you need things to make sense. They need to totally make sense. Things don't make sense. We are not getting past that front. I know. Yeah. Um, True. Yeah. The 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 energy centers are amazing because it's really about opening the doors to your Mm -hmm, heart, mm -hmm. and when all the doors are open. Mm-hmm. And how to open those doors in the right mm-hmm. order, then you're just, you're fully immersed in the world mm-hmm. and in mm-hmm. the experience and the learning and the communication and the connection. Right. And then the third one, which is super interesting, is that alchemy. Alchemy is the bomb. <laughs> alchemy is really, I'm just going to say this, but it's about your field. And when you learn about alchemy, I mean, this made so much sense to me. It was like really amazing. Yeah, it really mm-hmm. did. Um, mm-hmm. Fortunately, we were in the uh, tolerant. Uh, phase. We are. So the mm-hmm. tolerant uh, mm-hmm. uh, range. Range, the yeah. There's not an alchemical snap. Yeah. That, it was close, happens. though. It, it's really, alchemy is really about how you, um, your tolerance for people and Level of refinement, and yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, mm-hmm. so your level of refinement. Mm-hmm. The, the analogy of mm-hmm. ore is used, mm-hmm. you know, in this technology to to express that. And right. Kismas is gold. Like no question, you can always just look at her. Look at the way she dresses. Look at the way that she shows up and presents herself. She's gold. She's fussy. She needs things to be a perfect Shh, way. Don't tell. Uh, I have the gold mm-hmm. and a fair amount of silver. Yeah, you're more silver. And the silver is more gold. Look silver. at our mics. The mics They're are silver. silver. If we could have had gold, that would have been cool. But. I actually have a gold one. <laughs> what? Bring that's it so out. Cool. Well, the sounds might not match, oh, so that's why I use the I magic mics. Yeah, no, it's but fine. it's super cool looking, and it's I'd good. love to set that up for you. Yeah. The lamp over there is rose gold, so I'm good. Um, but what's cool about alchemy is that this is the number one reason why relationships get challenged. Yeah, for sure. Whether it's your intimate relationship mm-hmm. and, or whether mm-hmm. it is your um, work relationships or mm-hmm. your friends or whatever mm-hmm. it may be, it's the number one reason right. why relationships get challenged and there's energy drain between mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And the cool part is that everybody's perfect. Right. Everybody. Everyone's perfect. You don't want to change it. That's the cool part. You yeah. do not want to change who you are. Exactly. You want to know who you are. You want to know who you yeah. are. And then you understand how to relate right. to the world. And that's it. So when we talk about stay in your own lane, what this actually does is tell you what your lane is. Mm-hmm. So what's the lane? Right. And then the energy tools become right. just the greatest thing ever to help right. you stay in your own lane. Exactly. You, you use the cord cutting, you use the grounding to get back into yourself. All these sorts of energy tools help you to really just stay mm-hmm. in you mm-hmm. and be awesome at being you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So It's the best. So check out the link for that. And remember to ask whatever stories run in your head. Is that so? Is that so? That's a good one. It's a good one. All right. Thanks for bringing this, Nick. Awesome stuff. Thanks to our listeners. Um, So appreciate you. Please share this with someone you love. We're always looking to uh, get Illumination Podcast out there to more and more people. And stay tuned because we have some really cool topics and guests coming up very soon. So thanks for being here. Namaste. 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 
Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.